In a typical week in South Africa, there are a staggering 500 murders, 4,500 violent assaults, and 126 kidnappings. An elite police unit is being used to combat the most dangerous work in the country. They are known as the Special Task Force. Every year, over two million holidaymakers visit South Africa, and protecting them is a high priority for the South African government. But organized gangs have recently begun to rob travelers at gunpoint as they leave the airport. The police have been tracking one gang, and tonight have asked for the task force's assistance. The team are all in plain clothes. Captain JJ is the commanding officer. Over the radio, they hear that the gang has attacked a young couple as they arrived home from the airport. Van, a task force officer, and JJ are in the lead car. Arriving at the scene, they find two gang members have been arrested, but three others have escaped by car. JJ and Van rush off in pursuit. What's a car is that? See me, what's a car is that? I like a The suspects are in the red car, 200 meters ahead. They now realize they are being chased. In their haste to escape, the suspects drive through a busy intersection, ignoring red lights. Increasing their speed to 170 kilometers per hour, the suspects suddenly swerve onto a motorway slip road, taking them in the direction of the city center and busy downtown streets. With the road momentarily clear of other traffic, Van attempts to disable the vehicle. The occupants are still armed and dangerous, and there's a risk that the car might be leaking petrol. All three men survive. Captain JJ calls for an ambulance. The reason I opened fire on the vehicle is they just committed the armed robbery. Uh, we gave chase, we had information, confirmed information that they were armed and uh, their modus operandi was to follow the people from the airport and rob them at their homes as they turned into the driveways. They were armed and dangerous, being a hazard to the public on the roads, uh, we had to stop them. Back at the scene of the robbery, the other suspects are questioned. And the young couple explain how they were attacked in their car as they arrived home. They were holding their guns at, at, at us or at the windows. Then I realized there's no way in which I can be able to run, to run away. I've never been pointed a gun at before in my life. I was also afraid that uh, we had a, our child, you see. Uh, it's a seven-month-old baby. So <clears throat> we were afraid that uh, these guys are holding guns and, uh, at us uh, and we don't know what they're going to do. They might be going to, it might be that they're going to shoot us or it might be that they're going to shoot the child. I was uh, very happy. 
uh, the way in which the, the, the police managed to, to save us from that situation. The next morning, Van is on parade. I joined the Special Task Force to be in one of the most elite units in the world. We do get the most dangerous work. Um, when nobody else can do it or want to do it, then they'll uh, ask for our help. But saving life has its dilemmas. The feeling you get uh, before you shoot a person to save another person's life, it's a strange feeling. I don't, you don't get used to it. Um, I haven't been in that many um, situations where I have to take a life of another human being. After parade, Van returns to a surprise. <laughs> a very old and common joke in the special task force, putting your phone on some foreign language. The task force has a brief moment to relax. On the other side of town, Police detectives have been hard at work on last night's tourist robbery gang. They now know the exact location of the remaining gang members and once again request the assistance of the special task force. That night, the unit rolls into Hillbrow, the most dangerous section of central Johannesburg. The intelligence has given the task force 22 confirmed addresses to hit. Several suspects are taken into custody but the unit is also searching for the gang leader. He is captured in one of the last flats to be raided. Their search reveals a firearm believed to have been used on previous robberies. The detectives recover dozens of suitcases belonging to the robbed tourists. The night has been a complete success. Next morning, and the task force gym is full of activity. These are some of the few apparatus uh, yeah, exercise with every day, you know, to try and just keep in shape and so. Yes. That's it. Physical training is very important, especially when you start reaching my age. <laughs> and you have to run around after people in the bushes and above buildings. If you're not fit, then you lose. And if you snooze, you lose and then they get away. So you have to try and keep fit. And I'm having a rough time, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Being an elite team, the men constantly work on the skills needed for the various types of situations they encounter. Today, they are busy with an obstacle course. It's almost like uh, my second home, this, because I, well, my wife is here, I should probably tell you it's my first home, because I'm more here than I am at home, so... Inspector Warren Morris has been in the unit for seven years. Our primary job in the Special Task Force is hostage situations. Um, to begin with, some of our basic kit that we use. Okay, this is the stun grenade that we use. Disorientates um, not only by the sound it gives, but it gives a, a large flash. Our side weapon is a, is a 9mm pistol. Whoa. Here's a handy piece of kit. Uh, it's a mono lens. It's a night vision. Shotgun, 12 bore shotgun, which is a bit shortened. We call it a stompy. This is the MP5. 
used uh, throughout the whole world um, by most special forces, including the SAS. My little sweetheart, Shadine, and my little daughter, always got a photo close by. Warren is on standby for a large job, but is allowed a few hours off. When our work gets busy, it really does get busy. Um, we can be for weeks on end away working, not even being at home, not even getting to see my little girl. Most of our situations are extremely dangerous. There's definitely that little thought that's in the back of your mind about this may be the last time I get to see my little girl and my wife. We're given a couple of, hour, couple of hours off, and which has turned into a couple of uh, minutes off. Um, but luckily enough, my understanding and loving wife will hopefully treat me the same by the time I get home again. So, uh, as it's, one can imagine, it plays a bit of havoc on your, on your social life. The task force has received information that a bank robbery may take place the next morning. Warren changes into civvies and joins members for a briefing. Their plan is to enter the bank under the cover of darkness and wait in position until it opens the next morning. It's now just before 9 a.m. Information that we have are six, six suspects that will be uh, robbing the bank from about nine o'clock, uh, between nine and ten. Um, presently, we've got now four, uh, three of us that are sitting here in the manager's office inside the bank. Um, we've got another team down in another office in the bank, and we've got uh, two members that are going to be watching the surveillance cameras inside the bank. And. Uh, we're obviously going to wait and see if the, if, the, if the robbery comes off and try and make some arrests. They just let us know on the radio that there are there be four suspects coming into the bank. I The info that we have is um, mostly hand pistols and one AK-47. Warren is told the gang's lookout is outside. The task force moves into action as the gang enters the bank. Task force work is all about control, dominating a dangerous situation using their voices rather than their weapons. Just stand there, don't worry. Hey, lie down. Lie still. Also arrested is the bank guard, suspected to be the gang's inside man. This gentleman I saw taking out his gun and throwing it on the ground. And uh, as you see, the suspects have got with their weapons, with their pistols, are lying uh, safely under our control. The operation was timed to a fraction of a second. Another moment, and the gang would have had time to draw their weapons. With South Africa averaging 500 bank robberies a year, it isn't long before the unit are called to yet another high-risk situation. Earlier that morning in Johannesburg, three suspects had surprised a bank manager and forced him at gunpoint to open the safe. The manager had secretly hit the panic button. When the local police arrived, they came under fire. In the confusion, the bank manager escaped. Now the armed suspects are trapped inside. JJ and his team are able to walk straight into the bank as the three suspects have hidden themselves somewhere in the upper floors. 
Ja, ich wüsste, das war jeder dann eingekommen. Ein Gurt, vor eingekommen und ein Gurt oder eingekommen. Half the team remain in the bank, while the rest hurry to the rear of the building. They've been told that there's an emergency exit into the bank from the car park. Armed suspects have been pinpointed to an air duct on the third floor. The unit enters to flush them out. The moment they see the task force, the suspects give up. The arrest of bank robbers has become routine for the unit, but with South Africa suffering from six and a half thousand kidnappings and abductions per year, it's only a matter of hours before the men will be called out again. To the outside world, the day Nelson Mandela handed over the presidency to Thabo Mbeki, South Africa could celebrate its democracy and change. But on the streets, the police are struggling to combat a huge crime wave. In South Africa, a highly lucrative and violent business is kidnapping. Businessmen are lured into the country, abducted and held hostage. Eight days ago, a wealthy Romanian suffered the same fate. He is being ransomed for $300,000. The gang is known to have carried out previous violent kidnappings on foreign nationals. We haven't even seen the gang before. But what we do know is about the one incident, or the both incidents, the first uh, kidnapping of the Chinese person that they shot him in the leg, and the uh, third one where he was executed, shot at point blank range in the head. So obviously they mean business, and um, we'll be as careful as possible and be as tactical as possible when we uh, uh, do these addresses. A police undercover team has tracked the kidnappers to an address near Johannesburg. The task force had rescued the hostage just in time. That one, another one to take me to kill me. 
to shoot me. That was the problem. And they said, put your coat on and let's go to the hotel. And I know what. And I was praying. With the frail South African economy in need of foreign investment, protecting overseas businessmen from gangs like these is vital. My friend Dirkis is uh, sleeping on duty once again. And I just cannot tolerate this. Now I've got to wake him up another way, which hopefully he will not forget. So here we go. Hostage rescue is solely the job of the special task force. Their training is all about repetition until the tactical movements become second nature. In saving lives, there can be no margin for error. But they also have to train for the most difficult hostage rescue situation of all, a hijacked plane. It's a combination of stealth, speed, and daring. These were only training exercises. Tonight is the real thing. We've got the hostage situation there. Uh, it's a guy. That's holding his two sons hostage. What do you intend to do? Depends on his mood, how aggressive he is, all that kind of stuff. And if we don't get any reply at all, so that can only mean that he doesn't want to negotiate and we have to, we have to eat the house. It's 11 p.m. as they make their silent approach to a suburb of Pretoria. The men learned that tonight's situation started as a simple domestic dispute. When local police arrived, the father shot at them several times and then barricaded himself inside the house with the two small boys. As the distraught mother is led away, the hostage negotiators finally admit defeat. The task force takes over. With the father unstable and violent, the men fear for the children's safety. Within seconds, the unit takes control. The father immediately surrenders and his loaded revolver is recovered for evidence. The two children are safely returned to their mother. In the last 19 years in South Africa, the special task force has not lost a single hostage. It's a Saturday morning in a Johannesburg bank, two weeks before Christmas. The calm is shattered by an armed robber who has taken a bank guard hostage. As the customers flee the building, the robber points his weapon at the tellers, who are safe behind bulletproof glass, and demands to be let in. With their concern for the guard, the tellers open the security door. Police swiftly surround the bank. The robber is now trapped with hostages. The special task force has just been scrambled. Come on, 
It's a race against time to Johannesburg through heavy traffic. With the task force minutes away, police negotiators are on the scene and persuade the robber to release all bar one of the hostages. The bank guard remains behind as the suspect's human shield. Civilians and the world's media are kept at a distance. A hostage negotiator, Superintendent Kutsia, keeps the robber talking. Captain JJ is in charge of this operation and orders a small team to secretly enter through the second floor of the building for a reconnaissance. Superintendent Kutsia returns from inside the bank with the suspect's demands. With the situation rapidly deteriorating, JJ decides on a plan. He is going to take the place of a female hostage negotiator. Another team are sent in and take up their positions in the bank. Minutes later, they report back with a possible strategy. JJ must see the situation for himself. He soon returns to brief his men. As the hostage taker still wants to speak to the media, Captain JJ requests our cameraman to enter the bank with him. Unknown to the suspect, the team who entered through the second story window have now worked their way down to the ground floor and are only yards away from their target. JJ must lure the suspect forward to the window and into their view. Jeff, explain to him the angle on the glass. There's a big reflection here. What are we going to do? The bank is closed entirely. Okay, Calvin, stand for me up. Okay, come for me on, so off, and on the other side. And then on the other side here, near Calvin, the four weapons will I see, as it please. That's a four war room where I can can see. Okay, right, come for me on. Calvin, I will as it please, the cameraman will the four weapons see in all the time. Kijk, stand voor mij zo. Kom af. Kom af. Wat zit Kelvin? 
Ja, want die man kan het niet op een andere manier doen. Nie. Wat is je gehoor? Nee, is niks niet. Dat is echt wat die staan en opspringen om met jou te praten. Oké, okay, Kelvin, ek, kan ik ook komen gaan kijken wat iemand hebben is. It's critical for JJ to coax Kelvin forward. The hidden team cannot rescue the hostage unless they can clearly see him. Kelvin? Oké, je moet voor mij die deur kom opsluiten, nee? Oké, okay, kan ik ook kom? Want ik kan niet ook als die deur niet open is, nie, of kan je laat die camera van je afnemen? Hey, voor mij zie je, dat is de vrede van daar. Kijk, okay, hier is ik zeker, daar is ik zeker. Praat met me, man. Voor zij trap ik, Kelvin, laat je niet afval daar niet. There's nothing there, Calvin. There's nothing. No, there's no one there. We can't get into the bank. No we one. This is the only you door. You know the people that got into the bank. We can't get into it. The taker is uninjured. The weapon he used turns out to be nothing but a realistic toy pistol. Get a paramedic! The guard is taken to another part of the bank. He is stunned, but unhurt. You meant the negotiator. Yes, my mother. What is it? The bank guard is led out for treatment. Kelvin is taken away to be charged. Today, the task force were up against an amateur. Their next opponents, however, would prove to be much stiffer opposition. Tonight, the men are expecting a violent robbery in an exclusive restaurant. They arrive at base dressed in their best civvies to pose as diners. What are you exactly, Stephen? There was a big, noisy... Welcome, welcome, welcome. Last to arrive is the job's second in command, Marjan. Marjan brings his own interpretation of stylish evening wear. Thanks. I'll go your way. Because then you got a good view on the, on the front door, yeah? As with all task force briefings, the planning is meticulous. These guys will be responsible to cut the robbers off as soon as they enter the building. Apparently there's five guys who have previously robbed the same restaurant and uh, they are all armed with five uh, pistols, possibility of AK-47s. And uh, the leader of this group, he just killed he killed a, a cop that two weeks ago, point blank, took his pistol and ran off. It's 12 p.m. at the gang's intended target, and the task force have been here for the last four hours. Fearing some of the waiters may be informers for the gang, the men have locked the entire staff in the storeroom and confiscated their mobile phones. The task force members take up their positions. With the task force unit concealed outside, they radio Captain Vimpy with new information. 
As other task force members arrive, one robber is secured. Three armed suspects are on the loose, and the grounds are carefully searched. They tried to rob this, uh, this guy again for the third time and uh, as they came in we shouted police, police and the guys went for the guns. They pulled and we had to try and stop them. So unfortunately it went out on a shooting and uh, we're still looking for some of the guys They might be in the area around here. All right. The paramedics tend to the wounded. Three robbers were shot, one fatally. Their bullets had come a lot closer to the task force than first thought. One round had hit the counter, which had shielded Vimpy and Marjan. The unit have once again faced a situation the local police could not handle. And yet the special task force is paid exactly the same as the regular police. At times, the unit's work seems closer to fiction. This is not a Hollywood film. This is the real thing. You can't arrest people who are shooting at you. You have to defend yourself first before you can arrest them. I've been hit by AK-47. And this is what one bullet can do to you. Um, the most difficult part to live with a task force member is um, you never know what to expect. The one day he's at home, the other day he's gone on a job. Um, you never know if he's coming back. You never know where he's going to. He's never here. Of most of the time, he's not here to look at my schoolwork or when I'm playing netball or dancing. And yes, I am scared of him being shot again. I do feel proud he's working with the best unit in the police, but um, it's not, I don't think it's worth it. Go! The Special Task Force is one of the best trained and most experienced elite police units in the world. The men are the pride of the South African police force and hundreds apply every year. But how do you prove you are good enough to join them? These regular policemen are trying to join the unit. <laughs> Today is the end of phase one, an intense four weeks of various stamina building exercises. Stand up straight. Stand up straight. Lift up your arms. 
Fuck like that. Oh. Huh? Oh. Oh. I'm back Warren Morris has left Pretoria and is one of the course get instructors. Get this, get this, wasting time. Out of 350 applicants, just these 21 men remain. Why, number six, do you have a water bottle on your hip? Why? Why? No water is allowed to be carried as now the recruits must drink only when ordered to. Today is a make or break firearms test using live rounds. This is your last chance. Your last chance, a third chance. You can't believe it, but yes, you get a third chance. You fail, you fail. All right, next. Go! It isn't much better on the next range over. But because I don't know what they do. They place down open blood. I stand flippin seven meter van die af en schiet die boer om. Close that, Jutes. We are waiting for you. Back at the training camp, and three are told they have failed the firearms test and are going home. Now only 18 remain. The next phase has been nicknamed fuss bait. Afrikaans for to bite down hard and never give up. The recruits have no idea that for the next 86 hours they will be allowed no food, no sleep, and be subjected to almost continuous marching. Uh, this is a, a night march. It's uh, basically to test the stamina and endurance between 30 and 40 kilometers that they will cover. They're carrying at the moment a relatively lightweight rucksack and a, and a rifle. But four hours into the march, the light rucksacks are swapped for a chunk of rail track, chain and ball. The combined weight is 50 kilos. It's been specifically designed to be impossible to comfortably carry. They will have to walk with this weight for eight hours. As dawn breaks, the men have walked for 40 kilometers. The aim is to test the recruits' resistance to pain and frustration. Despite the extreme fitness of all the recruits, for one of them it has already become too much and he's been taken off the course. The recruits immediately move on to an obstacle course from hell. Live ammunition is used at all times. This phase of phosphate is not only a physical test, but also a mental probe to expose all their fears. They must conquer their fear of heights and not freeze or panic under fire. By now totally exhausted, the last hurdle to cross on the obstacle course is a swim across an overflowing dam. Once again, different levels of fear are tested. Ow! 
As day two draws to an end, the instructors relax back at training camp. The recruits, however, must endure the 40-kilometer march back from the dam. Arriving at the camp, there's no let-up. They're made to stay awake by making farmyard noises. An hour later, they're back on the march again, this time for 70 kilometers. The next morning, and the men haven't slept or eaten for 56 hours. They arrive just in time for breakfast. As the instructors tuck in, the recruits sit and watch. Nice. One instructor decides to spoil the recruits with a lamb chop. That's one piece of meat shared between 17 men. After a few minutes rest, the men continue on. No, I don't feel sorry for them. I've got um, a sense of understanding. I know what they're going through. And it gives you a, a sense of pride because you know that they are giving their best and going through hell just to get what we've got already. At dawn, the instructors have their hands full, keeping the 17 awake. The recruits have now had no sleep for 80 hours. Advanced sleep deprivation is an essential test. Because of their specialist role, the task force often work for several days without a break. For the repeat sleep offender, instructors wedge a sharpened stick under his nose. The recruits limp back to base with their spirits slightly lifted as they sense their ordeal is over. The 17 have covered 200 kilometers and have not slept or eaten in four days. Congratulations. You have passed the second phase, which was called fast bite, into the dam, all of you. Now. These men still have another six months of rigorous selection to go. They can fail at any time. But for the men already in the task force, the work continues. The task force had information that these suspects were on their way to attack a 70-year-old white farmer and his wife. In the last five years in South Africa, over 600 white farmers have been murdered. Hardened criminals here have little respect for life or the law. Every 36 hours, a policeman is killed in South Africa. Despite facing the most dangerous work in the country, the task force have had just one of their members killed in action. With South Africa the most violent democracy in the world, the men always have another situation to go to.